Hey y'all, it's Lizzie Yayo with Keeping It a Bando, and I have Lamar Russ, boxer Lamar Russ. Can you go ahead and tell everybody who you are? My name is Lamar Russ, man, the boxing cube, Mr. HBO, Mr. Showtime. Yes, man, I'm from the Wilmington, North Carolina, the Port City, baby, by the way, of the two cities, man. Yes, and um, who we have here? We have a... Uh... Okay, home fit. Also known as Christian. Nice to meet y'all. Nice to meet you. Texas and North Carolina. Just my lady. Okay, shout out to Texas. And we got, he said, what, Winston? Where you, where you say you're from? Oh, I'm from Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont. Yeah, from Beaumont. Okay. Also, Mr. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Awesome. I'm thankful to have you guys on the show today. No, we appreciate you. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Um, how so what is it that you do so the people can know? Well, me, man, uh my heart, man, I'm a professional boxer. So I mean, you know, I'm real good at organizing, throwing them things. But more importantly, instead of being fighting for free, I get paid to fight. Um Middle on HBO, Showtime, ESPN, Tunnel for Tour, and um, the Contender Show. I lost on HBO. I lost on the Contender Show. Um, shit the bone of my elbow. But uh, more importantly, man, I've been on the major networks. So, um, been there, done that. I'm just blessed to be here. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And along with his journey, Chris, have you been there along along the way? Yes, for the most part. Since he's coming back, yes. It's all right. Awesome. So what got you into getting into boxing? Um, you know, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. So I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina when I was seven. And my mom was a single mom and we had four, she had four kids. And, you know, we all a year apart. So my sister 36, I'm 35. My brother Johnny, he 34. And my brother Pierre by the turn 33. So <clears throat> with that being said, you know, I'm seven. Imagine we got a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and an eight-year-old, and she is single mom. So with that being said, um, we ain't know nobody in the city. And so she had her first job in the city of Women's and Boxing Center. And um, she was just like, I don't know anybody. I don't want y'all getting in trouble. And so I, she was like, which one of y'all want to box? And you had to be nine to start boxing, but Coach Morgan started training me early. And he only made an acceptance for me. So with that being said, I just started boxing and um made it real with you, man. Um, that's probably the best thing I did in my life. It took me on trips and showed me the world, you know. Um I actually got good at it. So So where where all did you get a chance to go um through your journey? Being real with you, I think I've covered more probably about every state in the United States, it's something like two or three states. But uh, more important, I've been Carl Seed, I've been in um, Kazakhstan, I'm in the um, Dominican Republic, I'm in the France, I'm in to Italy. I mean, boxing is to just change my life. You know? So, so well, now that we know that you got your stardom as a child, mm -hmm. not due to force, but you know, like, okay, here's your option, here you go. What made, made you stay in it? Um, just being real, just staying out of trouble. Um, you know, being from Wilmington, North Carolina, I mean, Wilmington, a lot of people think Wilmington is just, it's the beaches and oh so nice. Wilmington ain't. Um, certain parts of it is the trenches. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I mean, I grew up in the trenches, uh, me and my two brothers. So with that being said, um, one thing for me, I was always in the gym, you know, and the guys in the gym, we got a guy named Donald Sanders, Donnell Holmes, Rashid, um, Diab, Johnny Hunter, Jason Bruno. You know, I've been around those guys. They kept me out of trouble. Um, we got the twins named Ronald and Donald. Them guys right there, man, they used to take me to McDonald's like every yeah, Friday. You know what I mean? At the school, at the practice, and when the gym closed, you know, so. With that being said, that just kept me in the gym because I always wanted to be around those guys. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, being nine, nine years old, eight years old, being around older men who was already popping and was popping in the city, that kept me wanting to be around them and in the gym. So. That's dope. So, I think that's great. And that's something that a lot of people should 
be interested in doing for their children to keep them motivated and focused <laughs> because they say an idle mind is the devil's playground. And I, I definitely, um, we have a gym here right in Bonnie Doon that people don't even know about. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was amazing to find out. So my son, I have him doing that. His father, rest in peace to Jermaine, who I was able to meet you through. Warrior same Boxing Gym, that's a good gym. My coach, Patrick, that's a good, he's a real good guy. When I say he's a real good guy, man, I've seen him take on a whole bunch of kids and actually do the same thing that was done to me. You know, taking them out of town in New York, Ohio, and things of that nature. And that right there is going to motivate a kid to want to stick around and be involved because if your parents not financially supportive or can't really support you in that manner, going out of town, went off of a coaches or a program's expense, that's a blessing. And it takes strong people to come together as a village to do so. And we greatly appreciate mom. Shout out to mom. Shout out to everybody that is, has been supportive of your journey and others as well. Yeah, my mom, Donna Cooper, man, she's a strong black woman. Um, you know, everybody's try to so -called consider their parents strong. You know, but in all the reality, my mom raised three boys a year apart. You know what I mean, man? With that being said, that's hard, when, especially when you want to boy want Jordans and Air Forces or, or, you know, back in the days, we old, you know what I mean? I'm 35 <laughs> going on 25, but more importantly, when, you know, back in the day for us, it was Duckhead, it was Tommy, it was Nike, you know, Air Forces, even the Jordans, you know what I mean? Like, for her to do that for three boys, we a year apart, that's a monster. It is. That's definitely a monster. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, and me and my brother, we, we shared outfits. I'd be like, bro, look, you go to these black pants too, is it? <laughs> I'm wearing more pride. Teamwork. But, but yeah, but Pierre was a spoiled one. That's my baby brother. His name KP. You know what I'm saying? He was the yeah, meanest one too. But he was a spoiled one because he get to wear everybody's stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's a Vanessa Gay. He'd be cool with me. But then when we had to know what my son, he called my brother Johnny, and he turned me and Johnny against each other. So Aww. he's a cool one. Well, so he's one of them. He's smart. <laughs> so you had a fight just coming past, I want to say March the 26th? Yes, man. Yeah, so how did that go? Uh, uh. Um, more importantly, man, um, I've been out in the ring for like four and a half years, and I lost on the contender show. I took the bone of my elbow, so that being said, um, I had to take almost like a year and a half surgery. I mean, I had surgery, but I had to take a year and a half fall after the surgery. But then more putting on top of that, I still had a torn tendon, which we didn't know. So then that took another about a year. So then a half of a year, I did one about six months. What I did was try to train and it just wasn't right for me. So in January of last year, you know what I'm saying, right after my birthday, I went to church New Year's Eve. Told myself I prayed to God and said I'm gonna get off my butt. I got up to like 200 pounds. And then I'm like right after my birthday, I was like, man, I'm gonna get back in this gym. Cause boxing would treat me well financially, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I bought my first house and the car that I have, you know what I mean? And just took care of me. So I'm like, I gotta get off my butt. And plus I love to spoil my kids. Shout out to my son, Cameron Russ, my daughter Malia Russ. But um <clears throat> More importantly, I say, look, let me get back in the gym. We got back in the gym. I'm supposed to have two fights, one in July, one in November, and then fall through. So then um, around December, we found out about this fight out here in March. We all right, so bet we're going to prepare for it. We prepare for it, and um, I fought a guy, man, a seasoned guy who's been fighting like all the time, rough guy. And um, it's just so crazy, man. I knocked him out in the sixth round. Um, when I say knock him out, I mean I put him out, which is a blessing because the guy was giving me a run for my money. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. <laughs> it kind of scared me. I came first two rounds, I think I lost. I mean, I'm a straight shooter. And the third through the sixth round, I was like, man, I gotta tighten up. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I, I gotta tighten up. So, uh, the sixth round, I'm just like, man, look, it's time to get him up out of here. You know what I mean? I gotta let this shit on my level. Caught him with that check left hook, it was money. So, mm -hmm. yes. 
And honestly, man, I I respect the guy Ricardo Marcel. I respect them because a lot of people wouldn't even take the fight with me. And as they say, oh, Lamar rushed this. Uh, but they always talk all that BS, but they don't want no smoke with me because they know I'm, I'm like that. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, man, um, I respect Ricardo for taking that fight, though. You know what I mean? So. Well, shout out to Ricardo. And congratulations to you on that knockout. God bless the Lord. It's good. Yeah. Hey, that fight was dedicated actually to the mother of my daughter's mom. Angela Bronson, like I love that lady right there to death. Like she was literally my second mom. Like she's just an awesome person, man. And her smile, just the way she talked and the way she coped with me, like that is my dog, you know. So I had to dedicate that fight to her, you know. Um, so shout out, she was with me. Yes, man. I love that shit right there. Yes, yes. 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 knock out for you, boo. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, man. Yes. <laughs> But that is so awesome. So, like, during your training, like, how hard did you have to train? Did you train every day of the week? How many hours? <laughs> <laughs> what? Because I know every time I'm like, I'm looking at your page, you in the gym. Nah, I've been real with you, man. Um, I train every day. Um, thing about it was, it was just different, man. Coming off of two, uh, coming from weighing 200 pounds to fighting at 167. Um, not only that, but just like making sure your mind is together. Cause even when I the night of the fight, I'm still nervous as I don't know what. You know what I mean? Um leading up to the fight, I'm in the band, like, oh man, like bro, you still you still you wanna fight still? You know what I mean? I'm like, oh god. But then when I got in the ring, they call it introduction and me, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm like, when it's time to get to it, I'm with it. You know what I mean? When that's even when like fighting, street fighting, or anything, like when it's time to get to it, I'm with it. Like we can talk all day and I talk, but when it's time to really get to it, I'm with it. So when I got to the middle of the ring and it was like touch gloves, I was like, yeah, ain't no turning back. Let's get to it, gang. Like, let's go. So um, we got to the first day. And the crazy thing about it was I lost the first round. You know what I mean? Lost the first round. The second round was kind of close, but I told myself, I said, look, bro, like, this is what you was born to do. So from the third to the sixth round, I mean, I had it in my mind. I'm on his ass. So it took a lot of mentally focusing on what like on you how you gonna hit how you gonna move like i know that thing come fast yeah most definitely um boxing man a lot of people don't understand boxing is more of a mental sport than a physical sport because one thing about it is you can have all the training in the world but if mentally you're not there you're not being a winner and being real with your mental a mental a mental fighter be the physical fighter any day because some fact if you got that drive to think in your mind like yeah, i'm gonna be brown all right, bet. Well, uh, okay, first round, I'm going to go down and throw five punches. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to throw these five punches. But you know what? When he throws hard punches, I'm going to play real good defense. I'm going to let him punch himself down. Vice versa, a man is being so physical when he's just going to throw all the punches in the world. He don't got no plan, and he lost. So. And you get tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very tired. And one, one more thing before I – well, shout out to a lot of boxers in North Carolina too, like Michael Williams Jr. Um, young know, kid from Fayetteville, he's a real good kid, you know. Um, he can fight his ass out too, you know. And then we have um Joe Jackson, a guy from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's a he's a fighter. We got Jamar Freeman, that's my twin brother from Wilson, North Carolina. Stevie Massey from um Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and Levante Early from Charlotte as well, like. All these guys are from North Carolina. They're some good fighters, man. So I just want to shout them out. Dope. And um, so we had a topic for keeping it a bando. And the topic was, have you ever prejudged somebody? <laughs> I let you go, man. <laughs> look, look, he said he about to hand it over to Chris. <laughs> All right, well, well, for one, like maybe when I was younger, I might have. But now that I'm older, I understand. Because also, like, I suffer with, like, sickle cell. For those who don't know what that is, it's like a like a blood disorder. So and so a lot of people look at me and they just assume and that you know like I got it all together and things of that nature. And then like every day is easy, but really every day is a is like a grind. And so like I go harder like each day. But anyway, but I don't judge people because you never know. Like like you never judge a book by itself. Nah, really. She was though. You talking about a female? Oh, female! Oh, oh, female too. Female too. Here we get juicy. Her too. Oh, yes, sir. So we are gonna have both. We're going to do male and female, so let's go with it. <laughs> yeah, that's juicy. Uh, yeah, sir. 
Never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, I ain't lucky. Especially with a female. But you might think it's all sweet. Mm -mm. No, sir. <laughs> At all. So, uh, yeah, man. I'm going to get you to elaborate on that. I might come back. Ah, <laughs> you're passing the torch. I mean, you can have the moment. I mean, I went to Fayetteville State, man. Shout out to Fayetteville State Bronco Pride all day. I graduated. Happy to check. Yes, man. Bronco Pride. Yes. But uh, more importantly, I mean, um, going through the college days, I mean, we definitely did it. You know, um, especially being a kid. So, you know, we a little different. Um, you definitely just a book by ice cover. But um, as you get older, man, you realize that judging that book by ice cover be the, the worst thing in the world, man. You get that, that pretty girl who. She like that, and you know what I mean. She boy got like five kids, and got dang said in section eight, which I ain't never wrong that because I ain't gonna lie to you. My first, I got five kids. I'm staying second eight. Well, <laughs> Shout out to the real bitches out there. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, my first apartment was a uh, low income housing downtown Fayetteville, so I ain't even knocking that. But I'm just right. saying, like, you can't be satisfied with that. You got to be able to want to move up and actually grow. You know what I mean? So, um. But yeah, I mean, I I've been prejudged before. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> Look, he reminiscing like, yeah, I prejudged, but I still didn't did it. Did it, did it. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, like, she might be the baddest, just like, but she'd be crazy, the attitude, throw off, and all type of shit. So you just like, so we need know. some therapeutic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you want? What do you say, crazy? Huh? What did he say? Crazy. Blue, blue. He's, He's like, like tell crazy. my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, say that again. What you say? Oh man, like he already know what's going on. I don't want to throw it out there like that, but yeah, you know they just, you know. Yeah. Ah, I man, that's one of the things you gotta explain. I don't know, man. I need more time. For that. Bro, it. <laughs> so, like, no, from, from a male, <laughs> how about a male like a homeboy? <laughs> Have you ever prejudged a homeboy? Uh, yeah, most mm -hmm. definitely. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you, me. I had a homeboy from, um, I'm going to be real with man. He from the Ville, you know, and um, where I came off, like, yo, like, I'm down for you. We going to rock in, boom, boom, this, boom, boom, that. But when it was time to get to it, like, matter of fact, I was in the club escape. Hey, shout out to Rip and Chuck. Them wet Wednesdays, ain't nobody touching that. Them wet <laughs> Wednesdays was a thing. Ain't nobody rocking with no, the wet Wednesdays is, is, is legendary. Yes, it is. I remember them days. But uh, we was at wet Wednesday, actually, man, um. We actually got into it with some guys, and um, they got real nasty, man. And more importantly, man, um, dude, I'm talking about on why. Who said he was down, this and that? He got missing on us. You know what I mean? I mean, he man, went to the bathroom. Nah, yeah, he went to the bathroom. <laughs> right? yeah, sure. But uh, one thing about it is, I mean, one thing everybody know me. They know me. They know my brother, them too. You know what I mean? KP and Johnny. Call them Bravo. But they know that. Them Rush brothers, we always stick together. Like that wasn't the only thing was about that. So you fight one, you fight all. But uh, we got into it with some dudes and bro got low. You know what I mean? And we seen him after. He's like, well, I left, bro. I'm like, come on, man. Like, it's teamwork effort. You know what I'm saying? Like, good thing we a good thing I have my brother in there because if not, you know what I mean, it'd be a little different. a little different though, you know what I mean? Um, so with that being said. That's what that was. That was cool. <laughs> but um, do you have any inspirational words that you want to give out? Yeah, most importantly, um, one thing that my coach, Alfonso Smith, man, he's the former coach of Ray Marshall. Shout out to Ray Marshall, too. He's from Fayetteville. And his two sons, they, they my dogs, too. But um, <clears throat> he said, a man that want to do something will find a way to do it. A man that don't will find an excuse. And I say that every day. I wake up in the morning. You know what I mean? Um, me, I got two kids. I got a boy who's 10 years old, Cameron Russ, and I got a, a daughter who's two, you know. Um, so with that being said, I wake up and say that every morning because one thing about it is um, I, I wake up and like, yo, I got to get my kids the best, and I'm going to find a way to do it. You know, um, I ain't going to say life has been the hardest for me because boxing and, you know, being doing right by myself and what I mean, being being respectful and, and loyal to God, you know what I mean? I ain't really hurting for too much, but um, <clears throat> I see that saying every day just to make sure that I keep myself humble. That's a good inspirational quote. Do you have any inspirational quote, Chris? Uh, just something I keep with me, just like 
Keep going first. Strive for success. Don't worry about the holes and all the stress. Keep your heart with prize. Wait, is you a rapper? Do the rest. No man. Okay, do it again. Say it again. Okay. Hey, he never <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> say, say it loud. Say it with your chest. All right. All right. Keep going first. Strive for success. Don't worry about the holes and all the stress. Keep your eye on the prize and let God do the rest. I like that. Yeah, I like I that. Too. Do you have any shout outs? Uh, yeah. Of course, my uh, my uh, my other parents and my bro, Scotty. Uh, you motivate me every day. And um, and everybody else knows I tell you every day. Okay. One thing about me, I got a shout out. I got to shout out Fifth State, man, more importantly. Shout out the Q's, but you know, shout out SP, GBK Watches. Hey, talk. Listen, go to their page and look them up. They like that. Shout out the Bass Out for the sweater. Um, Shout out to everybody that support the Boston King, man. Um, like I said, man, we came on four and a half year layoff. And with that being said, you know, a lot of people counted me out. But with this knockout, we can walk a lot of people up. And, you know, with that being said, uh, I ain't look the best in the ring. Let's be real with you. I ain't going to lie to you and cap on you. Like, I was the sharpest thing in the world when it came back to fighting. But more importantly, four and a half years off to me, I mean, I did okay. But with that being said, if I never fight again a day in my life, I got a KO. <laughs> Last fight was a KO. Hey, you went night-night. But we hope to see you doing coming out again. Because I know that a lot of people be excited to see you fight. And you got a lot of supporters that's down for you. No, I appreciate you more importantly, though. You know, um, I've been knowing you for a while as well, too. But more importantly, I appreciate you having me here. And, you know, we just laughing and joking and kicking because that's what life is about. You know, so many things going on in the world that people just see or take everything so serious that to the fact of not knowing who's going who's gonna to be here tomorrow, who's not. You know, so one thing that we should do is definitely cherish the moment, cherish the people around you, and cherish your kids. That's what I said about this guy right here, man. Like that's my guy right here because you know, um, instead of I'd be like, bro, let's go, let's go out to eat. He like, I bet. You know what I mean? Sunday roll around. He like, yo, we're going to church, right? I'm like, yeah, we go. Ten thirty five. Bro, where you at, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you rolled up to the church there? I'm about to leave out. You know what I mean? With that being said, man, bro, I ain't too proud to go to church. It's the same thing with me. You know what I mean? So it's great to have a good friend like him. So that's my dog. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank everybody that tuned in. Make sure you all like, subscribe, and share. All right? And you go to Lamar Russ and you go like his page. Follow me on Instagram at, at BoxingQ, B-O-X-I-N-G-Q-U-E underscore for all the news updates and the fights and you know you find me on facebook too at lamar russ yes ma'am all right you have you want to tell everybody where to find you before yes. we close out at k harm fits follow me there and shout out to the whole 409 all right. Man, you gotta say it now. Oh, too. Oh, yeah. You gotta get married. Okay. Yeah. No way. I digress. Yes. Yeah. Go follow Lizzie Ayo at L I Z Z I E Y A Y O on Instagram, y'all. All right. All right. Peace. Yeah. I, 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 I. Being cute face. Skin cute face, baddy with the fatty fact that I get to it. Got these broken bitches, Aggie. Money, my movement, I am Jackie. Join a curzy, they can't catch me. Makes my game up. Yeah, you can share it.